everyone. Welcome to the Headwater Science Center again. Our 3.30 show is, is here again. The Sunday show has been varied and wide in its, in its content. Today, maybe you've got a clue. We're going to be talking about, not me, our newest employee, Anne Skoy, who is uh, an expert on brains today, at least today she is, <laughs> and where she's going to be talking about the brain. So we're going to, I don't know what she's going to do, but I hope you guys stay tuned because and tune up your brains. And I predict that if you listen, you're going to find things out about yourself you did not know. And certainly you'll find things out about Anne if you've never seen her or don't know who she is before, too. So let's bring Anne in. Come on, Anne, our newest brainiac here at the uh, Headwater Science Center. And I leave you in the very capable hands and brains of Anne. Thank you, James. Hello, welcome. Uh, bienvenue. Herzlich willkommen. My name is Anne Skoy. And I'm back at the Headwater Science Center. I was here in the 90s when the Headwater Science Center was new. And I'm going to talk to you today about several things, several things that we have at the Headwater Science Center. One thing that maybe you have never noticed is we have these wonderful blue books when you walk in where you can read about the history of the Headwater Science Center and uh, look at newspaper clippings from the past and even find a picture of me from the early 90s. Is that coming in clear? So if you're, if you're interested in archives and learning about the Headwater Science Center, when you walk in the door, you can look at, check out these. Yeah, it's the podium that has the guest book in it, has those under it. So maybe some more interesting things. So all of us have brains and our brains um, are inside of our skulls. Why do we keep them in our skulls? To keep them safe because they're very important and very precious. But here I have my friend Billy, and Billy is missing half of their skull. Billy, can I borrow your brain for a moment? Billy says, yeah. So today I'm gonna to show you some parts of the brain, okay? So this is the part of the brain that is called our prefrontal cortex, okay? our prefrontal cortex. And that part of our brain is very important. It helps us um, do deep thinking, make good choices, to socialize, to imagine, to be creative. And that part of our brain is really needy. It needs a lot of energy. A lot of blood vessels go through it. Um, it takes a lot to keep that part of our brain safe. Hi. Um, and then we're going to talk about inside of our brain, deep inside of our brain, we have parts that lots of other animals also have. This big prefrontal cortex is kind of special for humans, and not a lot of animals have this much energy devoted to that kind of part of the brain. But we also have a part of our brain, if you look deep inside, how's it going, Ryan? Can you see it? Yep. Mm -hmm. This part right here, which is called the hippocampus. And the amygdala is a tiny part here. And the scientists who studied the brain and gave it names, they thought that it looked like a little almond. And so they called it little almond in Latin, or amygdala, amygdala. So I'm gonna invite you, all of you wonderful viewers out there, to show me your hands. Good job, Ryan. And we're gonna make a brain, okay? So take your hands and your thumbs. Okay, we're gonna imagine that this is your hippocampus right here, and on the end of it is the amygdala. So you actually have two. And your prefrontal cortex is gonna wrap around those parts of your brain and keep those parts of your brain uh, safe and protected. It's kind of like imagine you're giving them a hug. Okay, and you can put the two parts of your brain, the two hemispheres together. Okay, so this is some of the brain science. Um, for the last two years before I came to the Headwater Science Center, I worked for another great organization in Bemidji called, the, called Peacemaker Resources. And there we talk a lot about how to live in a community, how to get along, and also how to keep ourselves regulated and take care of ourselves so that we can do our best thinking 
our best socializing, our best imagining, our best creations, our best science. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about a scientist who is a medical doctor um, named Daniel Siegel. And he came up with what we call the hand-brain model. So today, right now, here at the Science Center, I'm a little bit nervous because I'm talking to you, but basically, my brain is working together. My amygdala feels safe, my hippocampus is all working as one. But if, if something um, were to happen or I would need to react really quickly, maybe, maybe a saber-toothed tiger would come to life and run up the steps. I would have to, I wouldn't have time to think about what I should do, what would be the best plan. I'd have to react really quickly. So what my brain would do is, instead of my prefrontal cortex taking over like it is right now, where I can think and plan and organize and imagine, my brain would flip open, kind of, not, not in real life, but this is just way, one way to kind of help you imagine it. And the other parts of our brain that can react quicker, that can maybe have memories about what to do, when something like that is going to happen, um, react really quick. They are kind of like they are kind of like the guard dogs, okay, and the fighters. They're the guards of my brain, and they help keep my body safe, okay. But when they're fighting and working really hard, when they're in charge, I can react quickly. I can maybe hide very quietly. Oh, your camera's following me, huh? Mm -hmm. There's things that I can do, but I could not win a game of chess. I could not have a good conversation with my friend. I could not really learn and remember something new. I couldn't rest and digest really well. So sometimes when something, when we have big feelings and your amygdala is kind of in charge of big feelings, our brain kind of gets all shooken up like this. Can you see that? A little lower? Okay. And I need to come up with strategies to kind of relax my brain, relax my body, and let my prefrontal cortex get back in charge. Okay? But sometimes I could do something like take a couple breaths and take a little bit of time, just like this is settling back down. Okay, sometimes it takes longer than that. Mm -hmm. I could do another breathing activity. For example, I could breathe in and breathe out and slow my breathing down. And by slowing down my breathing, by breathing out, by exhaling longer than I breathe in, that's a way to show my brain and show my body that things are safe again, how to regulate myself again, so that I can have my prefrontal cortex back in charge. Okay? So our prefrontal cortex is a part of the brain that does thinking. Complex thinking, makes decisions, helps you so be social, helps you... Um, learn and imagine new things. Okay, we have a hippocampus here that is in charge of memory and storing kind of big, um, big, big memories and helps us react quickly. And the amygdala at the very end has our big feelings. And so humans we can do things to help our bodies and our brains calm down and help us do our best thinking. Okay? So that's one thing about human brains, again, by Daniel Siegel. Um, and since we're talking about human brains, I'm just going to take a minute here to make sure that I get to this. Oh, and my phone is ringing too. Um, to talk about another very important person to me. Excuse me. 
um, another important person to me who has a very interesting brain, and her name is Dr. Laddie Elwell. And when I started working here in the 90s and then for many years after that, she and her husband, you guys see this picture? Is that cool? Yep. Mm -hmm. James Elwell um, were here, and Laddie was the director, and James was also very helpful in running and keeping the Headwater Science Center going. And one of the things that I learned from them, especially from Laddie, is that everywhere you go and however you use your brain, there's always something wonderful that you can learn. And so if you keep your brain active and keep learning and keep growing, wherever you go, there's something amazing and interesting that you can discover. And that's one reason why I decided to come back to the Science Center, because by learning new things, it helps keep our brains healthy and strong. Um, and so I was really happy when I got here that I could see some new things I didn't know about the Science Center. And some of that was the collections that we have. So I'm going to show you um, some of our things that have to do with brains. Okay. This right here, anybody recognize this? Maybe if you look carefully at the shape of the head and maybe at the teeth, this is something that maybe some of you viewers at home um, can see and some that's very popular on the internet. Very big eyes on that thing. Yeah, very big eyes. Very good for seeing at night. And if you can look in here, this is where the spinal cord comes out. So when we talk about brains, we're also talking about nervous systems. Because our brains are connected um, through our spinal column, right? Through the nervous system that controls our bodies. But if you look at the size of a cat's brain, mm -hmm, kind of see what fit in here. Just take a look. I don't really need to make many comments about that. So a cat is a mammal like us, so cats have some things in common with us and how our brains are structured. And they have quite a bit of space for the brain, and their brains take quite a bit of quite a bit of energy. Excuse me. This is what happens when you need to turn off your phone. So I know when I was doing my skull demo a while back, when we were talking about identifying skulls, one of the first things I brought up is it's really easy to tell mammal skulls away from everybody else because they're the only ones that really have that big visible brain mm -hmm. case like that. Yep. And mammals, we're kind of inefficient because our brains, we need to eat a lot. We need a lot of energy. We need to be very busy keeping our brains fed. So that's kind of a dangerous thing to have a big brain that needs that much food and energy like a human brain. So I'm going to talk to you about a couple other kinds of brains that we can look at here. This is another animal, a skull from another animal, and maybe you can see up here. Mm -hmm. You recognize the shape there, right? The, the eyes come, we'll look at the posterior view here. Any guesses what this is? This is a turtle skull, okay? And turtles are reptiles, and humans have some of the features of brains uh, that, that um, um, humans actually have parts of the same brains that turtles have and um, part of our brain the base of our brain is similar to what you'll find in reptiles and turtles and other animals like that so we call that an ant call that the base of the brain mm -hmm. We can we can take a pause here and yeah, we're address take a pause. this. <laughs> Got one of my. Hi, Cameron. Would you like to come in? Would you like to log into the Headwater Science Center website and watch my live stream right now? It's not on the Headwater Science Center's oh, it's, website. It's coming. <laughs> I'm curious, can I talk with Arnold? No, not right now. Thank you. I'm gonna turn this off for a second. This is what I should always do before I do a presentation. All right. Happens to the best of us. Happens to all of us. <laughs> this is something I need to learn here. Um, so we were talking about turtle skulls. And this is maybe one thing that happens, right? When you get nervous, 
you get forgetful about things. Mm -hmm. um, and turtles have, we, so we have some similar features to turtles, but turtles, um, the ones that we have here in Minnesota and ones that live other places, turtles can live a lot of ways that would be hard for humans to live. For example, the turtles we have here can spend months underwater without being very active all winter. Or there, there are tortoises that can live in the desert and, and eat very little because they do not need to feed these big demanding brains that mammals have. Mm -hmm. And also fish, this is a type of catfish, kind of catfish skull. And you can see there's really not much room for their brain. And sometimes we think having a big brain is better, but in some ways it's not. There are a lot of things that a catfish can do that people can't. So what we call smart and what we call not smart is kind of depends on what is going to help us or help whatever whatever creature that is, or whatever animal it is, um, to live their life in a good way. Uh, there are other animals that have other kinds of nervous system. This is one that I would like to learn more about. A trilobite, I mean not a trilobite, a horseshoe crab that lives today. And I, this is one thing I want to discover and learn more about. Um, and like I said, being here, um, is, I always get to learn new things. So I have known a little bit about the brains of an octopus. I'm gonna bring that so you can see it. This is a little octopus. Maybe if I turn around, you can see the eyes. Mm -hmm. And they are very fascinating, very different from mammals. Um, and they have a brain that's kind of shaped like a donut. It's circular. And they also have a part that comes out to their, to their eyes, an ocular part of it. And then part of their sort of brain, sort of nervous system goes into each one of their tentacles. Their tentacles um, can do a, a lot of things. It's all connected. If you were to cut off a tentacle, it couldn't think on its own. But their brains are very well adapted to the way they live. And their brains are also cool because they can get squished really small and then unsquish and keep functioning. That's something that our human brains and our hard skull here cannot, cannot do. So in some ways, an octopus is maybe smarter than we are. So is an octopus brain made of like the same stuff that our brain is even? I, I some of the same, I, I need to read more about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some of the same kinds of things, but it's also, I think the way, I will read more about it. And I can put a couple, maybe we can put some links uh, there's to some good articles about it. Can we do that in there? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, again, when we think about people, like here, Dr. Albert, Dr. Professor Albert Einstein, um, when we couldn't off of Deutsch training, so I come here to the Headwater Science Center because I love science, but I'm also interested in, lang interested in languages. So I teach German sometimes, um, in my family, we speak French, and sometimes I teach, teach Spanish too. So, if current to make here, Dr. Professor Albert Einstein of Deutschland, but I think we're going to talk in English. Is that okay? Yeah? So, people talk about your brain, don't they? Jawohl. So, they say my brain is really special because both of the halves of my brain could work together really well. Yeah? So when they when scientists studied my brain, they saw that one side of my brain was very well connected to my other side of the brain. So I could do creative things like music. And that also helped me to think about scientific things. And my logical brain helped me describe them and use language and use mathematics. And using it all together helped me come up with some wonderful, wonderful ideas. Because imagination is so, so important. So how, how does someone have a brain that is exceptionally well connected between the hemispheres? What, mm -hmm. what, what does that? <laughs> well, first of all, usually women have brains that are better connected between the hemispheres than men. So being a woman could help you with that. But also that's something that you can help your brain learn how to integrate and connect 
both hemispheres by by concentrating and meditating and singing and playing and doing those kind of things. You can help your brain learn to be learn to work better. And by learning, you can also keep your brain. Oh, Dr. Schoen, Professor Dr. Albert Einstein. Um, and by learning, you can also keep your brain healthy. So they have found that if you learn another language, you can keep your brain from getting Alzheimer's. People who've studied another language have built up extra muscle, extra muscle power, extra places to remember things in their brain, and it's a protective, um, protective against. They may, they may just be able to come up with strategies of how to adapt, but they are diagnosed with symptoms of Alzheimer's up to five years later than people who are monolingual, who've only learned one language. So keep learning. Um, it's been studied with languages, but I think learning anything can also help your brain stay healthy. Um, so I want to mention that um, we have new hours at the Headwater Science Center um, starting now, right? So we will be open Mondays and Saturdays from 9.30 to 5, 9.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Also Friday. Oh, and also Fridays. Yep. Also Fridays. <laughs> this is why I checked it. I will add it on here. Also Fridays. It's Monday, Saturday, and Friday. Mm -hmm. Monday, Saturday. This will be on the website soon. 9.30 to 5 p.m. 9.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. On Sundays, we open later, 1 p.m. and stay open also until 5 p.m. And then special, now, because we want to keep groups um, together and not mix groups too much, we will be open Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays just for groups, for school groups, scouting groups, homeschool groups, any other kind of group. So give us a call. You can talk to Peggy or anyone here about, um, about booking a group, and we'll try to... Uh, Keep your group separated. We'll uh, clean between each group and do our very best to keep us all healthy and safe. And we've, we've been getting a lot of calls on those Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday dates. So call early if you are trying to get a group in here because those dates are getting booked up pretty quick. Okay. All right. Are there any questions out there? Nothing new. Nothing new. All right. Well, thank you very much for listening. Remember, keep your prefrontal cortex happy by keeping regulated. Take care of your hippocampus and your amygdala and keep using your brain and learning. So thank you everybody. I look forward to meeting you all or re-meeting you at the Headwater Science.